Hi everybody, Spider-Girl back once again for part 3 of the Optimus Prime cosplay build. In the last video I did say that I was going to be working on the head and I would be showing that in this video. What I am going to do is I am going to show you it but I'll show you at the end. What I feel like I've been doing is I've been kind of focusing on the head far too much. It's basically it was the, the, the sole point of part 1 and part 2. And uh, I wanted to kind of branch on and show you the other things that I'm working on and kind of how I built those parts. As you can see as well, we're in a kind of a different location. Um, it's currently quite late at night. I do a lot of my work at night because I'm more, I'm more awake on a night than I am on a morning or during the day. So um, yeah, but it's a little bit cold in the garage because of that. So I brought everything into the house. I can kind of do a few bits here before I go to bed. So that's kind of why a little bit of a different location. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the upper thighs and this is basically them and what it is is um, cardboard, thick cardboard, uh, which eventually was covered in thin EVA foam, uh, which you can kind of see there and um, yeah it was, it's just basically when I first made it it was just the cardboard which you can kind of make out there um, but it ripped, um, it looked a bit tatty, it, it creased, it's by the end of the very first day I wore this, it's, um, it was basically, it was damaged and so on. So I had to kind of repair it. So what I did was I covered it in Neva form, um, drew the designs on again, and it just looked a lot better, especially around the joints. The problem that I have now with it is again, it's getting a little bit damaged, a little bit tattered, because obviously I'm walking all the time and it's rubbing against things, and it does catch and rip, uh, which I think is gonna happen with whatever I make these out of. They're always going to get wear and tear, but um, just a little bit more sturdiness by using paper mache over the top of this. And then what I'm going to do as well is these sections are going to have raised out, kind of like I did with the, the forehead of the, uh, the the head, have these raised out on different levels. And again, on the front there as well, have these kind of like different levels kind of stepping down over. And then this as well, maybe with a second section here. I might also do the same on the outside, kind of like have a rectangle just to kind of give it a more three-dimensional look. The way that these work as well is um, these open up by Velcro and basically it's, it, it flattens out. And you'll see there's um, some Velcro down here and up there, which when they're folded up, attaches to my leg. This is my uh, left leg. So it attaches to the top of the outer thigh and the bottom of the lower thigh, uh, the bottom of the inner thigh. Keep getting that wrong. Uh, and what I have is the trousers that I wear when I'm wearing Optimus is I have Velcro strategically placed in certain places so that it sticks to my leg. So that as I'm walking, it'll always stay attached. And that's kind of how I designed this. And I wanted to do it so that once I've got the feet and the lower legs on, I could then just wrap this around my legs and it was a lot easier to get on. And it's kind of worked really well. Um, just to bring it in, here's the other leg. So that's kind of how they look. And of course, they're uh, tapered in to go from the outer thigh to the inner groin, so that it kind of gives that look. And it's basically, I wanted to have it so that there was as much of this as could be seen and as little of my legs or my trousers or anything else, um, just to kind of give that illusion of, of Optimus Prime. So that's basically how I did these. It was quite, um, it's quite a, a, a basic idea where I just basically wrap these around my legs and make it look like they're part of the costume when actually they're just stuck to my legs. So that's kind of my plan for these anyway. The second thing that I'm working on is the arms. Now these are basically designed so I could slip my arms in and then they're on a hinge so that as these go underneath the costume and then these are at the bottom, yet I can still bend my arm, do any sort of movement that I, I can. Once I'm in the costume, I'm quite hindered by the boxiness and the bigness of the, the, the body. So my arm movement is limited anyway. So wearing these, I'm pretty much given the range of movement that I would have whether I was wearing these or not. And they always, they've worked really, really well while still giving that aesthetic sort of look that whatever pose I'm doing, the white parts are always attached to the red. I also designed them so that they could come off easily kind of like that, uh, because these are the last things that I put on. So once I've finished putting everything on and my arms are freed up that I don't need to bend them as much anymore, 
I can just slot my arms in and I'm good to go. Again, it was kind of designed with myself in mind so that I could put them on easily if I'm by myself. Um, and it's, it's worked really well. These were very much the same as the upper thighs. These were basically cardboard, painted red and painted white. You can see on the back of these, I didn't actually cover them in form. Because these are at the back, you, you'd never really see, so they're not really going to be shown that much. But that's kind of what it looked like, and then I covered the rest of it in form to give it a cleaner look. After all the time of wear and so on, it's kind of become a bit grubby. Um, the same with the uh, the inner part of the arms, because they're rubbing against the body, the form's getting chipped away, especially on this one, because I'm right-handed, so I use my right arm a lot, and you can kind of see there, it's a lot more damage than the, than the left one is. So, um, and that's kind of the problem that I found with it. I did like the clean look, and the kind of like the, the cartoon, um, drawing sort of look that this gave but the uh, the form just gets damaged so so much it just gets chipped away so easily so what I'm kind of going to do with this is again uh, some uh, definition on the strips down the side some more definition on here because these are raised deeper form but they, they don't really pop up that great deal so I'm going to make them a little bit thicker paper mache and then I'll reattach this what I'm going to do with the back of this as well, I'm going to kind of taper this in a little bit more so that it's still thick at the front but it kind of bends in ever so slightly so you don't get the rubbing over here. It's, it's, it'll then just kind of taper in so that it doesn't rub as much and hopefully won't damage the, uh, the paint on the outer side. Um, the outer sections there as well, the corn, they didn't quite go as well when I was using the foam. The bottom where it joins together, that was that went terrible. Uh, which is kind of, this is kind of why I lean more towards paper mache and, and, and use it for a lot more things than, than kind of using foam. And my foam skills aren't really up to scratch at the moment. I'm still working on them, I'm still kind of practicing. But for big things like this, um, I found that just kind of like putting stuff together then paper mache in to kind of give it a cleaner look is the better way to go for me. So um, that's kind of where I'm going. But that was kind of like the design for the arms and the upper legs. And um, that's kind of how I made those bits. So I um, hope, hope that helped anyone who's also looking at making a big, big build. I mean, this is the thing with these. It doesn't have to be Optimus Prime. A lot of the kind of uh, techniques that I've used are things that people have made to make uh, Gundams or Voltron or other kind of big builds. Um, Megazords, um, it's so universal that you can take these designs and incorporate them into whatever it is you're doing. Um, so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. And a lot of the things I kind of looked at what other people did. Other people had a, for Optimus Prime, had a, a white section that went up there, then the arm. Uh, some people didn't even have the white section, it was just a t-shirt. I'm not criticizing, by the way, what anyone else does. I'm not saying that my way is right and their way is wrong. Whatever anyone does, some people have done things and I thought, you know, that's a much better way of doing it than I did it. Or some people have done something and I thought, oh, that's a good way of doing it. I kind of like what I've done though. Each to their own sort of thing. And I say that basically if you are doing a big box build like this, whatever way you decide to do it is gonna be good enough because if you're brave enough to tackle this, you deserve um, to, to, to do well in it and uh, no criticism should come your way no matter how you're doing it because this is not the easiest thing in the world and considering this is my second build of cosplaying at all um, I, I, I'm quite I'm quite impressed with myself as to what I've done so um, but yeah this is basically how I've done it and that's what I wanted to show off I'm not saying that this is right and you're always wrong it's not what I'm looking to do so I just wanted to kind of clear that up um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll do the bits of work on that, I'll show you the progress as I did with the head, and um, I'll um, bring you along for the ride basically, so I will see you when a bit of the work's done. Okay, so here we have the upper thighs with the cardboard added, and as you can see I did a couple of different layers to kind of give that definition. I moved the semicirculars up to here, I just thought that looked a little bit better, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit more. For this section here I kind of did the back in one, then a middle, and then a top. Kind of give it a almost a pyramid effect. And I did that on both sides. 
Um, on the side, I did decide to go with a kind of like a, a, a raised part on here, just basically a rectangular um, shape with a smaller one on the inside, just to kind of give it a little bit of 3D definition. And then on the back, again, just the uh, the two triangle um, sort of shapes and um, double raised, and then that'll be the inner thigh. So I haven't put anything on the inner thigh. Uh, because obviously these are going to be rubbing together, so there's no point putting anything there. Um, and yeah, pretty much they are both exactly the same, with both on there. And the arms are ready to go as well. I've put on, I put two layers of the cardboard. I uh, just wanted to make it raise up just a little bit more, give it a little bit more definition. The strip on the side, that's been put on as well. I just did one. I, I, I did contemplate put a two, but I thought that might be a bit too much. So I just went with the one. And as for the arm pieces, they are now detached. And I have tapered the back, as I've mentioned. So now when they sit in there, um, you can see just in there, there we go. They don't rub together as much anymore. So that should stop the just the squeak as they move and it should make the arm move easier to move as I'm wearing it as well so there we go so anyway I have got my paper mache set up all there ready to go and uh, my towel which is very important because uh, your hands get all glugged up and then you can guarantee someone will phone you or text you at that point so always happens but yeah so there we are that's the progress um, as you can see here this this kind of section here always was a little bit lower than that one just the way it dipped down so this is a little bit too high but that'll get trimmed off um ready for when it's going to be paper mache but yeah let's get to it i'll see you on the other side and here we are with the final result on the arms and as you can see looking a lot better especially around the front here where they were all patchy and you can see the glue areas and now it's a lot smoother and just a lot more fluid. Um, the raised sections on the yellow bits here, I'm really pleased with how they came out. Um, looking just a lot more prominent and uh, especially from, from a distance they just stand out a lot better than they did before. I think my favourite of all though is the strip down the side. Um, yeah it's a lot a lot more prominent again you can see it raised out and it just stands out so much more um, the angling on the back here as well um, has meant that bending the arm is a lot better it's not rubbing anymore it's uh, nice and smooth and easy I've tried these arms on and um, they fit really well the arms bend so much better um, there is kind of like a gap there I didn't paper mache all the way down I knew that with bending the arm it would rip anyway so um, I didn't do that but that's not something you're going to see a great deal um, so we'll just see how that lasts out but again on the top half here of the white it's uh, it's looking just a lot better than it was um, on both sides really which has meant that uh, the two arms um, just look a lot cleaner a lot better a lot smoother and it matches with the body as well seeing as this is what I've done with the body um, is uh, the, the paper mache newspaper and then or sign and then um, primer and paint so you can still kind of see down there where the seam used to be but it's it's definitely not as bad as it was so yeah overall I'm really happy with them and they're very very sturdy as well and hopefully the insides won't get ripped as much as uh, as they did with it being actually um, uh, paper mache, they won't it won't catch and chip as badly as form. It'll still get scuffed and ripped. I know that, but uh, yeah, I'm pleased with them. And so moving on to the next bit here, we have the thigh pieces. Now these, um, I'm really pleased with. I love how, um, especially looking at it on camera, um, it looks really good and the, the the raised sections just make it stand out make it look so much better um, even on the side there where it's just two rectangles it looks fantastic and I love the back um, and that's on both sides I think the finished article it's the paper mache kind of didn't 
didn't take there, which I didn't realize till I was painting. Um, and, and obviously paper mache around these semicircles here was difficult on, on both sides. So it's not quite as smooth as I would have hoped. Um, on the inside of the lake, you can kind of see where the paper mache has gone as well. I think that's possibly a problem with the primer. Um, I used white primer, so it's still quite see-through. And in certain sections, you can still see uh, the newspaper underneath the paint. It's not incredibly noticeable unless you really, really look like that. But again, I think that's because I used a white primer. Um, I was I was kind of going for that to make them look extremely white. Um, but now that I look at it, possibly a grey one would have worked. Um, I'm currently painting um, the most latest thing that I've been working on, uh, which will be in the next video. Um, but I'm testing with some grey pine primer at the moment, just to see how that works. So. Um, but overall, I mean, I've tried these on, they work really well. You'll probably notice as well, they're no longer Velcro open. I've actually, as I was um, uh, putting them together, I, I kind of thought I can easily slip them on. Uh, the, the opening section was just to make it easier to put them on. But really, it's, it's not essential that I have that. And I liked the smoother look that kind of having them joined together gives it. So, um... Yeah, so I kind of went with that, and I have tried them. They fit on really nicely, and I have got an idea to keep them upright as well, because they used to slide, slide down, even with Velcro attaching them to my legs. They used to still slip and slide down. So I do kind of have an idea that I'm going to try out to see if I can get them up, uh, keep them up my legs. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give it a go, and you'll probably see that uh, in the last video, which will be once the whole costume is made, and I'll put the whole thing on and um, kind of go through all the different elements. But um, for the most part, I'm really pleased. Um, this is probably something I will work on again in the future. But for the most part, at the moment, I'm happy with them. And as promised to finish with, here is the completed head from part one and part two. And really, really happy with this. It just looks so much better, so much cleaner. Um, I, I don't know how well this is coming out with the light. It's not the greatest light in this room, but just so much cleaner than it was. Um, and you can see the shine as well. The top, the, all that shine that used to be on there is completely gone. Um, the antennas just look so much better than they did. A lot thicker, a lot bolder. Um, the semicircular antenna parts here, they no longer have that choppy bit around there. It just looks much more robotic as well. I think with the paint on the paper mache and, and I've gone for a more silver look on the face rather than the grey. It just makes it look so much better. This as well, as I said I was going to do, is corrugated. So you've got, there we go, a kind of overlapped different layers of card painted silver then stuck on there um, it kind of meant that this whole raised section I had around here um, it's not obviously stuck out because it, it's it's the same level as this now but I, I really like that I'm glad that I did that and then it's it's kind of all the same level rather than this being flat and this just stuck on top the glasses are back inside as well um, the face is looking just so much better, so much cleaner. Um, it does still have bumps and raises in certain sections, um, but I was kind of going for that. I didn't want to look, make it look completely smooth. I wanted to give it kind of still more of an edge, more of a bump in certain places to make it just look a little bit more cartoonish, uh, robotic. Um, it still fits really well, really comfortable. Much happier though with this than I was. Really, really pleased with it. I did kind of have to do a slight repair job on this side as well. Um, it After I finished making it, painting it, it got dropped and landed on the antenna. I'm not naming names, uh, but he's small, he's cute, and um, he's only two and a half, almost three, so we'll let him off. Um, but yeah, I, all I had to do was kind of put a some more paper mache around there and around the antenna just where it broke and then respray and repaint which to be honest I was going to do that anyway because uh, the sealer the first time kind of give it a bad finish so I needed to repaint it anyway 
so it wasn't too bad a, a thing but that is the finished head um, and much happier with it but what are your thoughts um, I'd love to hear your feedback on all the things that I've done in this video what uh, what your thoughts are on all of this and um, yeah and and uh, any feedback on ways that you've maybe built yours that are slightly different that I might might be able to use um, but yeah, any feedback or any comments I great, would greatly appreciate. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe for my next one in which I will be working on the white groin area underneath the body and also working a little bit more on the body just to make it a bit more secure. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, I will see you soon.